All right, guys, welcome back to Driving Life, the motorsports recap show where we break down the weekend's happenings. I am one of your hosts, Owen Trinkler. Next to me, Davin Degelau. We're in Showtime Motorsports Studios, associated yeah. with Franklin Road Apparel. Donovan, uh, a lot of stuff going on this weekend. Yeah, this is, compared to last weekend, this was a, you know. Busy weekend, for sure. Pretty full, yeah. A lot of, lot of good stuff going on. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll kind of cover, we'll see what we can get to. But, um, you know, Formula One, great race. I don't know how much of that you caught, but uh, I ended up watching almost the whole thing. Um, you know, Verstappen gets pole. He's never won in Italy before. And who wins the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix this afternoon? Max Verstappen, for the first time in his career, takes victory in Italy. And it was a victory by a long, long margin. Uh, and wins the race, kind of going away. Uh, some good stuff there with Hamilton. Um, kind of crashes, brings it back a little bit. Middle sector anyway. Well, everyone has been lapped so far by the race leader down to Valtteri Bottas. Oh, and sliding off the road goes the Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton. Oh, And Lewis. I think he might be, unless he can find reverse and he's kept the engine running. This is absolute disaster for Lewis Hamilton. Uh, what else we got? We got Monster Energy Supercross in Atlanta still. Uh, last week when we talked about but it, it was were, a sloppy mess. They wrapped up. They did three rounds. Yeah, they did three rounds. They did like last Saturday, then like Tuesday night, and then this Saturday. And it was actually some pretty decent racing there. Um, Ken Roxon almost uh, pulled it off. It was pretty cool. Cooper Webb ended up winning it, but uh, Ken Roxon lost the lead with... A little bit of mistake. Yeah, I yeah, kind of lost it right in the whoops there. And so it's Ken Roxon out in front, his lead as much as 11 seconds, and then this one drive through the whoops. There you go, a mistake that you rarely see being made by Ken Roxon, and this is going to be a huge, huge gift given to Cooper Webb. And you know what? Got to give it up to Cooper Webb for taking advantage of that mistake that Ken Roxon made. Ken said his handlebars were bent, but nevertheless, this guy took advantage of it. Eye of the Tiger. Cooper Webb got past him. Uh, that was pretty cool. MotoGP. Um, what's it? Uh, Quartararo. I kind of have a tough time saying his name. That's the guy that won last weekend, too, and I didn't know how to even pronounce it. Uh, Yamaha Rider ends up winning it. But the real big story there was uh, Mark Marquez coming back um, after nine months off it from a broken arm um, and was in top three for a while in the race there. That was pretty cool. That's good. And of course, we got... Martinsville, or excuse me, Richmond, um, you know, NASCAR, and um, had um, Alex Bowman. Alex Bowman, yeah, yeah. in the 48, come back. Good, when I was thinking Denny Hamlin, I'm like, wait a minute, no, no Hamlin no, didn't win no. it. He, was, he Bowman, won yeah, he Bowman showed most of the race. Late, late yeah. In the race and yeah. Then, yeah, and then, of course, uh, you know, the, I think the big story of the weekend was IndyCar opener at Barber Motorsports Park, uh, which you're very familiar with. Um, yes. First-time winner, Alex Palau. Who out of the car is just has such a lovely demeanor. He's such a pleasant young man behind the wheel. He is an animal. It's time for the motor racing world to say hello, Palo. Alex Palo wins his maiden Indy car race. Flag, baby. At Barber You're an Indy Park. Awesome, man. Great, great job, everybody. Uh, Chip Ganassi just kind of. Ran his race. It was a great post-race interview with him. Uh, young kid. What is he, 20 years old, 21 years old, something like that? Yeah, he's early 20s for sure. Yeah. Maybe 24, somewhere in there. But, yeah, early early 20s. Yeah. So, a lot of stuff going on. Where do you want to start? Um, I think we start with uh, IndyCar because, I mean, they're finally going. It seems like forever. Yeah. Everybody else has started. And... IndyCar, I know they po they were postponed a little bit because of COVID, and right. they're going to St. Pete next week, so they get two weekends in a row, which is great. Um, but, yeah, I think we start with IndyCar. I mean, lap one, whew, man, that was um, exciting for sure yeah. over turn four. But, man, I look at it as, as – and we can get into the reasons what happened to New Garden. But local, man, local boy. Yeah. Joseph. I, and just – it took out – I mean, he's out of the race. Colton Herta um, – Hinchcliffs out. I mean, yeah. this, this, the, there was, uh, Ryan Hunter Ray, like some yeah. of the guys that you think are going to be in for the championship. Yeah. And here we are, race one, lap one, half a lap. Yeah. Look at this. As we come up over the hill, he gets loose, gets in the grass, loses it. Nobody else can see anything until they come over the rise. And look at all these cars just stack in. 
and Jimmy Johnson comes to a stop and threads his way through that like it's a Talladega wreck. <laughs> Those guys are at the back of the pack now. Yeah, um, and it just, you know, I think, you know, in the uh, the post-accident interview, you know, Newgarden was saying, I just, I got a little squirrely, and as soon as I hit the grass, it just snapped him right around, right back into the middle of the track. I mean, he just got smoked. There wasn't wasn't much he could do, obviously, and there was, you know, some drivers. I think Colton Hurd even said, he's like, I just waited for him to go one way or the other, and he yeah. never, he just stayed straight down the middle of the track. Yeah. Um, and took a lot of guys out with him. No, that was the kind of the Talladega, you know, and Jimmy Johnson makes his debut yeah. at Barber and uh, sort of picks his way through that mess. Yeah. Um, and, I, you know, obviously I'm familiar with Barber. I've got hundreds of laps there and, and been working there, you know, with uh, the Porsche program that's there. Uh, gosh, I think it's been there since 99 or maybe 2000, somewhere when we moved over there. But, um, you know, turn four, it's just a tricky – tricky spot there are half there are three turns in yeah. coming to turn four cold tires um the a lot elevation of, a lot of adrenaline first race of the first year. race of the year for sure and that and the track has got so much grip in it now because yeah. it's gotten repaved so this is the first time they've actually been there yeah. in this pavement because they missed last year because of covid and so i mean they were fanned out i mean three wide a little bit you know coming out of turn one and they go into turn two they're too wide and so different com you know different scenario than they've ever seen because the grip that they have now yeah. with the new pavement and jo joseph had two cars in front of us you crest the hill in four it doesn't matter what car indy car street car um the car gets really really light at the apex there and you could hear the wheel spin they went yeah. to his in car and it's like man it just he, he didn't have any front grip with the nose with the two cars in front of him the downforce was gone off the car already and the wheels it's just light they light up and, yeah and um, that the way that crest when you come up over that it's 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 not a real smooth like transition right it kind of comes up and then levels off and it's got to be weird I mean I, I can only imagine what it's like in a car and I mean even though IndyCar has a lot of a ton of downforce like you said everybody you get light there no matter what right no you do I mean in a sort of a sedan car you can feel the car like you know extend the springs right. you know as you get to the apex and then all of a sudden it does compress but you got to use all the track out you know through turn four at the exit there and free the car up um to let it track out and it's just like you know he lost the air off the nose yep. got wheel spin barely caught the grass just, but you just taught it doesn't take much no, snap him right around and um man it just it started off that race just with those guys being on the sidelines now and who comes home third Scott Dixon. Yeah. I mean, just the ice man just sitting there just being consistent. Yeah. I mean, I know his teammate gets his first win and and powers chasing him down. Oh yeah. He was he would have one more lap and he was of course you he, don't get one more there. lap, but yeah, he was right on. He was right him. there. He was coming right yeah, he him. sailed it in there the last couple of turns, you know, yeah. um, to get a little bit close to him. But Dixon, I, I look at that guy, it's like, okay, well, even taking what he what he can get today. Pat o Award was was coming on strong. His pit strategy, I think, tripped him up a little bit. I don't think they yeah, quite nailed that, um, you know, but they were going for it. They were doing something a little bit different, and he was he was fast. He went, well, he got the pole. Yeah. So, I mean, I, and I watched that yesterday, you know, uh, the coverage there from NBC. But it, it was cool to see him get the pole, and now we got a first-time winner. Yeah. So, um, good kickoff for IndyCar. Wish he would have started a little bit sooner in the year, now, but I think it's good. Now we got back-to-back -back yeah. weekends. And then we got Indy coming up. Mm. So there's it's right around some, the corner, man. Yeah, it'll be here pretty quickly. So let's let's take a just a quick second here and let's talk about what I'll characterize as maybe Jimmy Johnson's Sunday drive. Okay. <laughs> Cuz he really and he, and you can I want you to weigh in on this, you know, Owen, cuz obviously he just was out there getting laps and and protecting the car and himself. He didn't want to do anything dumb. Almost gets caught up in that first uh, does, first yeah. lap crash. Um but it was pretty clear that his goal, and he even stated his goal was just to, I just want to make it 90 laps and, you know, get some some seat time, some actual race laps under his belt. Um, talk about that just a little bit about what his mindset may have been, you know, from a, from a driver's standpoint. And his first race, his first real hot laps in a race in an Indy car, you know, what's going through his head? Well, I think, number one, this is a completely different – you know, arena for him. And he knew that coming into this, yeah. that this was going to be a challenge this year. I think he's up to the challenge. Um, 
I think he'd been in, and I haven't personally talked to him, but he's done the Rolex 24 and some yeah. other stuff, you know, with us and IMSA. But I think this is a new challenge for him. Not saying that NASCAR got kind of stale, and but this is completely different. And being a California boy, that Rick Mears, right? You know, all the 500s he's won in any car, you know, that everybody, I mean, that's where I wanted to go, you know, and that's where probably Jimmy wanted to go. It's just circumstances put you, you just got to go where you're going to get paid and make it work. Um, Which I think he did pretty good. No, I think on the NASCAR thing. I think he did really good. (laughs) He made that work really well. Yeah, he sure did. So, I think going into this year, I mean, he's done some other stuff in his testing. He's run Indy cars. He's run some F4 cars, which is a lower tier I'm, formula car, just to get the experience for how those cars work and the downforce works. Um, that did he just didn't have downforce like this in, in yeah. NASCAR. And so I think you have to take that as yeah. You, first, you got to finish, and I think right. he took that approach. Um, I went and looked at some of the timing sheets. It was super competitive. Like you look at the practice, I think he was like 1.5 somewhere in that area off from the top of the sheet from first place. That's pretty good. Yeah. I think he struggled a little bit, you know, when he first got in, I think it was a little bit further off. So I think he's closed that gap down for sure. Right. Barber's a tough place to go. It's yeah. full commitment. If, if you guys were watching qualifying from Pat Ward, that was his comment. And I can tell you that from driving that place, especially when a downforce car, it's full commitment in some of those turns. I mean, you've got to go into the, the back straight away. That 12, 13 area, that is so fast um, when you're on your own. And, and being in that type of car for him, he's just getting used to that, how much you have to commit to it. I think St. Pete might be a little bit easier for him. I know right. it's a street course. But there's not as much elevation off camber correct challenges. Yeah. And it's more stop and go, stop and go, point it, go, yeah. point it, go. Um, I think that track he'll be a little bit better. Yeah, I think next week going into that. Um, I know he's done some stuff on the sim to get ready for that. And so I think today was just like in a natural environment of where these cars run on a road course, what he's going to see quite a bit of, because that's what he's doing, yeah. just the road courses and street courses. With the elevation change that Barbara has, the full commitment that it has, he needed to complete all the laps. And he did that today. Yep. Yeah. Um, got used to making, you know, Pit stops in IndyCar, yep. um, didn't hit the wall like some people did, um, <laughs> you know, in practice. I think uh, I think Alex actually did, I think, or somebody did during one of the practices. I can't remember which car did that. Um, I was watching some highlights of one of the practice sessions. Well, somebody even hit the wall coming into pit lane because it's got that that's kind what of I mean, yeah, tight that's left. What, yeah, it's yeah. talking about. Yeah, so yeah. Um, I think if I were to grade him for the weekend, C plus maybe, right? you know. Doesn't qualify last. He actually beat somebody on time. <laughs> right. And I, he, tweeted he tweeted that, tweeted that out. out. Yeah. Um, you know, and he, he makes all the laps. You know, that turn, you know, lap one deal was almost costful yeah. to him. And and he got through that and, you know, got used to it. And he'll he'll move on and go to St. Yeah. Pete. And I, I you know, the, the post-race interview I, I really liked. You know, he was really kind of upfront about it. He even said he made some mistakes in the cockpit. Um, and was going kind of backwards on some of his settings, didn't realize it. They caught it in the pits, you know, whatever. And, you know, he got it turned back around. But, um, you know, this is a steep learning curve, you know, for him to get in these cars and, and be fast, you know, right out, right out of the gate. No, for sure. And I think that's, I, it, I think that's one reason he's doing the DPI stuff in IMSA. They're, mm-hmm. they're going to do the endurance rounds, which they did Daytona, Sebring. Next race will be Watkins Glen yep. and then Road Atlanta. That car will help him with the Indy car for sure because the downforce and the tunnels that it has also. So I think that's one reason he committed to the, doing those races at the same time. So it's going to take some time, um, and he's not a spring chicken anymore either. Yeah, you, you know? think that's going to? I mean, what what do you think his ultimate goal is? Because I'm kind of surprised. Let me ask you this too. I'm surprised that he's not running the Indy 500 because Kurt Busch does a one race deal for the Indy 500 and finishes 13th. I think that may be a personal decision, maybe that he's not doing any of the ovals in these cars. Um, well, and I know they're fast. They're they're fast, ridiculously they're, fast. On and ovals. so that would be that's just my gut. I mean that there's, you know, when he made this decision as far as for his family, and they talked about what he wanted to do, um, that he's got you know some bucket list items to do that. I think the five hundred's on there. Oh, yeah, I think so too. Has to. Be. I, I just think that's a deal that you know, it's a. These cars are full commitment, like we talked about just even on a road course, and, and the 500 definitely is. 
Um, that's a special place, and I'm sure he looks at that because we talked about Rick Mears earlier in the show yeah. uh, that he watched him, and there was a good photo. I think it was on Twitter or something that Rick and him were chatting you know, in the paddock this weekend. So maybe down the road, maybe he gets this season under his belt, and maybe that's, next year he tackles that. Yeah. Um, that would be my possibility is he kind of gets used to this car and, and moves forward. So, cause I mean, he obviously knows the oval tracks and yeah, we've seen Kurt, you know, he came over a couple of years ago and, and did pretty, pretty well there. Yeah. Yeah. I was pretty surprised with, with what Kurt did there. Um, what do you want to you talk a little bit about NASCAR Richmond? Yeah. Cause I it would, wasn't a full weekend, right? The trucks on, uh, trucks were, um, Saturday, Saturday night. Yeah. I don't know. Th- no, it was during it was the day. During day yeah. yeah. During the day. And, um, and we, yeah, we don't have to go into to big discussion on this, but yeah, the trucks. Uh, John Hunter Nemechek wins and beats the boss man, yeah, right? Kyle Busch, and who from, was coming on strong? Oh man, from what I saw, like he sailed it into turn three. <laughs> I mean, he, I was like, I'm like, I wonder if he like was he trying to do the bump and run on his own truck? Yeah, right. Like, I think he. I mean, he listened for the win. I think he probably would. I think he would too. <laughs> I think he would for do sure, that. especially if it's his own equipment. He's like, whatever. Yeah, so I, I think um, when we saw we talked about front row motorsports, which we've talked about them before uh, with Michael McDowell winning. You know, when John Hunter made that move to go back to the trucks, and and I think this is you know out there. I mean, there's a need for Toyota drivers, and we know twenty three eleven right. racing with Bubba Wallace. They're probably going to expand at some point. They're not going to stay a single car team, and so his jump back to the trucks and to be relevant again is working out for him. I think this is the second win yeah. of the year. And he's in the best equipment that you can be in in that series. So, um, And he beat the boss man because Kyle is, like, unbeatable in the trucks right? when he comes over there and runs. So that was a good good race. and yep, Good showing for him. Um, yeah, yeah, we talked about the cup stuff. You know, Denny, man, two weekends in a row. Ah, so close. Two Virginia tracks where he's from. Dominate. Stage one, stage two. And I thought it was interesting that Joe Gibbs Racing, Truex was up there. Yeah. Well, they qualified I'll, on the pole. Truex did. Yeah, we started on pole. They don't go qualifying right now, but start on the pole. Well, but, right, 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 right. But, I mean, how that's sort of playing out, like, team orders of, like, the restarts and stuff. And, I mean, it almost got him caught out a couple of times with Logano. And yeah. then, I mean, talking about somebody that kind of came, he ended up crashing in the race, but Harvick sort of made a – you know, he's sort of back at the front a little bit this race. Um, but that almost cost Truex a couple of times on the restart. Well, and then he had a pit lane penalty that shuffled him back. Yeah. Um, was not his best day. And I think he was the favorite to win. I was looking at some of the, the betting lines and that kind of thing. And Martin was definitely the favorite to oh, win. Oh, for sure. Day. He's just been on a hot streak. And, yeah. And was showing some good speed. But then yeah. Alex Bowman, you know, comes out and steals it from Denny again. Yeah, right literally right at the very end, yeah, 10 yeah. laps, 14 laps to go, whatever. And, I mean, he was just – that restart uh, – because I think he restarted fourth um, and just went – drove it right straight to the front. And then had enough – I think even Logano commented after the race that, uh, um, you know, he had enough short um, – Run pace Yeah, there. short run pace where he, he got out in front far enough and they just couldn't catch him. I mean, they would have – you know, if it had gone 15 or 20 laps, he would have been toast, but – um, he made it work. Good win. He was emotional afterwards. His, uh, uh, his post-race interview was pretty good. It's pretty cool. Well, first win for him in the 48 car. Yep. First I mean, win for Ally. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they haven't won a race. Yeah, because yeah, Jimmy left, you know, and didn't win a race with those guys. But then, you know, kind of ironic, This the 48 car wins when Jimmy makes his first start over an Indy car. Right. <laughs> so yeah. when, the, when the 48 Indy car makes its first <laughs> race, the 48 NASCAR Cup car wins yeah. um, at Richmond. So, Good for him. Another, you know, first time winner for the year. Uh, I know Truex is, uh, you know, he's won twice now, so he kind of stops that streak. But here we go again on another streak, you know, yeah. where we've got a different winner and Denny's second again. Well, and that's, you know, what has there been? I think eight, eight different winners in the first nine races. So, yeah, it's making for an exciting season. Yeah, no, it's definitely, it's definitely good. Cool. One thing I want to talk about, and we touched on this just a little bit before, I believe, but Harvick struggling not just this year i mean the end of last year i mean he won nine races last year um but i I did a little bit of research on him no wins in the last 15 races um hasn't led a lap in the last seven races no top fives in the last five races 
definitely a struggle over there. Yeah. I mean, we haven't touched much on, um, you know, last week on their struggles at Stuart Haas. I don't know what, you know, it's strange. I, you know, you, he wins all those races last year, yeah, was, doesn't make it to the championship four, which a track that I thought he would just dominate. Right. He got to Phoenix, like, just hand him the trophy. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, I don't know. I mean, this sport is so weird at times. And when it's your time, it's your time. And you can be doing everything right in the shop, everything right, you know, you think in your debriefs and, you know, on the engineering side and just but things it, aren't clicking. And it doesn't look like he's catching bad breaks, like like bad, yeah. you know, yeah. like he's getting caught in wrecks all, yeah, you know, yeah. every week or whatever. It just seems like they are, they're missing they're the mark somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. It's slow. yeah. And that's got to be frustrating. Oh, I can't imagine. We, I've been there at times. It's like you're doing everything you feel like you need to do and – the speed's just not there in in the car or something. It's just so um, those guys have got to be super frustrated. I mean, he he did run at the front a little bit today. Uh, the other car, the ten car, his teammate uh, with Emerala ran up there a little bit yeah. also. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, maybe a little bit of momentum came from the day. I know he ended up crashing. Yeah. But maybe they gained a little bit of momentum. I think ultimately, I think right at the last lap, he went a lap down. I think they yeah. passed him. Right they did, the yeah, they end. did, yeah, because yeah, I saw Bowman split them yeah, there. Right. So, but he was kind of suffering along from from that crash yeah. that he had. I think in three and four, I think is where that ended up. But, um, yeah, it's shocking. You know, it's just yeah. you know, when when are they going to turn this around? And some of the guys that were winning last year have not won this year. I mean, we talked about Den- Denny's been fast, but he hasn't put it in victory lane. Yeah, yet. he's and, been dominant and hasn't got a checkered flag yet this year. And so that that's going to be interesting when we get to the the end of the regular season how this shakes up the playoffs right. for not, for the cup cars because you've got all these guys winning and they're locked into that first right. round right. automatically. So now it's not like, oh, I'm just going to go up there and be consistent and sort of um, make it on points. I mean, one guy I come to is Ryan Newman. You know, that's what he's right. done a couple of times right. to get in. Is He's just been super consistent and he makes it on points. You're not but gonna, now you've got all these other guys that are winning. locked in. Yeah, They're and locked so, in, taking those spots away. Yeah. So that means you know a Kyle Busch or a Hamlin – you think they're going to win at some point. Yeah, well, you would assume. I mean, Kyle Busch is another one that just yeah. can't. He's had a tough, tough go lately. Yeah. It, it, Denny's is coming. Speed's there. When you've got he's speed, fast. it's all going to work your way. When you don't have speed where Harvick is, and he's, I mean, he showed a little bit today, but that's where you get worried when you don't have speed in the car. Um, and I'm sure those guys, I mean, they're all those teams are good. Yeah. And, and when you're at this level and where they're working hard towards something and, and, you know, the Fords in general, I, you know, I don't, I mean, they're fast because Logano's. Yeah. And yeah, Penske's yeah, been Penske's up there. I mean, good, yeah. yeah. So I, I don't, I'm not sure what to think about it, but they'll get it turned around for sure. Yeah. I hope so. And then um, kind of finish up the open wheel side of things. Uh, Formula One this morning, man. Yeah. Imola, pretty cool track. It was, it is a cool track and, and it was wet. This morning, I love that. It, it shakes was, that every that. I've oh been yeah. like when it. They were talking about in the pre grid, and it's like, oh no, it's raining. I'm like, yes, like, <laughs> rain shakes everything up and makes it exciting. Yeah, and again, Formula One is. I almost hate to say it like this. It's kind of a lead follow, right? It's a strategy play, a lot of it. But this was a. I thought this was a good race, um, and it seems like this season. You know, I'm, we're only two races into it so far, but it seems like there's a lot more, um, you know, the, the, the teams are a lot closer. You know, be, before, it's it's always been, uh, you know, uh, Williams and, and or not Williams, uh, Mercedes, Mercedes and, and Red Bull, right? Or just really Mercedes and then, yeah, yeah. then 1B was Red Bull. Yeah, right. And then everybody else was like three. Yeah. But now it seems like this year it's still the same. Yeah, it's it's those two. But it, you know, Verstappen's fast. I mean, he's really fast. He's always been fast. He just couldn't finish a race. And then Hamilton's just insane. But um, he crashes. Lewis does. Yeah, and comes back to second place. So I think he went down to like. Eleventh, eleventh, yeah, a little bit further, but uh, so I mean, yeah, because I mean, which worked out kind of the same time that was going on. He goes off track, Lewis Hamilton. That yeah, because it was right after they went back, and he was he was like seriously chasing down Verstappen. 
Because they, I think they had both just gone back to slicks. Well, they did, but I mean, he was chasing down. But remember, all this sort of happened. when he went off, Lewis did because he was on slicks and he, he was trying to pass a slower car, yeah. and kind of got offline and went off in the gravel trap and then got out. But as soon as he was getting out, Botas and George Russell got oh, yeah. into it, and then it caused that red flag. So that helped him not lose not that lose. lap and everything mm-hmm. and stuff. But I mean, that was. Um, it seemed like George Russell was going after Botas. That it was his fault. But it's like that was just a little bit of kink. And I mean, a little left hand bend in the corner. You can't blame. You know, he's not going to move back over Botas to block him at that point. It wasn't that. Well, m- I didn't see it. I mean, even the announcers were saying that. You know, you could see a little like where he kind of juked a little bit right and then came back left. I, I saw the replay a couple of times. I'm like, okay, I'm not. I'm not seeing that. I didn't see anything where. It was blatantly obvious where he ran him into the grass. I mean, it just... This is an angle. Ah, it was a little jink right and left, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and, and at that point, Russell's wandered onto the grass, the wet grass, of course. Well, he believes that it was Valtteri's fault. I got the slipstream. I pulled out, and just as I pulled out, Valtteri moved very slightly, and that just put me offline and put me onto the wet stuff. And in perfectly dry conditions on a very not ordinary circuit, it's dangerous. Uh, from my point of view, obviously, I stopped for the for the dry tires and it was a bit of a struggle. Uh, it took, took time to get them to work, and uh, yeah, George got close and uh, decided to go for a move. Um, obviously, the track is quite narrow. There's only one dry line, and uh, he went from the outside. There was space all the time for two cars, but uh, didn't make any sense that move. He obviously lost it and hit me. Kind of happened. Yeah, I don't think I think that's a complete racing incident. Yeah. I don't see yeah, he's never driven like he doesn't drive like that. He no. doesn't have the reputation of that. Um, interesting conversation though, because Russell's under contract with the guy that runs the Mercedes team. Yeah. Um, so I, I see what tonight comes about yeah. next week. Yeah, and the, you know when they replayed the radio or when they were when you listen back to the radio, they were both obviously blaming each other. You know, blaming the yeah. other one. Um, but we go back to the grass. We talked about New Garden. That's yeah. what happened. Russell just got yeah, right just rear. touched. Barely touched it. Now it's wet for him. But, I mean, it doesn't take much no. to show everybody out at home. I mean, the guys are on the edge. And as soon as you lose just a little bit of grip, it's gone. Yeah. It, and you it, could hear it, I mean, instantly, like you said, just the same thing with the end car. And as yeah. soon as he hit that, it just shot the revs right through the roof. And he went. He was off running sideways into Botas. Yeah. What was that? It was over. But then, so they get the red flag. And then uh, we go back, and Hamilton starts a 10th, 11th, and I thought it was a really cool restart for McLaren. They get up to P2 with Norris. Yeah. And, man, I thought he was going to stay there. And um, Well, he was close. I think, though, but you know what? A podium finish for them at no, third it's still place great. is killer. Yeah, yeah. still great. But it was cool to see that in you know, McLaren, even though it's not the same McLaren like yeah. back when I was growing up. But right. yeah, it was still cool to see. And um, he was on the soft tires, but I think it was a great choice by them because – the track was a lot cooler, yeah. and to go to the soft tire, and you could tell he was right on it on the restarts. He got by the Ferrari, got to second place, and it was just, you know, couldn't do everything, you know, to stay with Verstappen, but he was in in yeah. the conversation. Yeah. But then Hamilton drives all the way back to second. So, that's, yeah. And then, and, and again, just you can't hold him off. I mean, it was just, there's, there's just too much speed there, right? But in that, in that Mercedes, and, uh, you know, for as much as for as fast as the McLaren was, it's still not they're not competitive at that point, and we, and it's hard to pass, especially on a wet track because it was still wet offline. It was yeah. wet enough where you know you had to be really careful. But you know we're talking Lewis Hamilton too, so well that's what well that's what caught Lewis out on the first time when he went yeah. off. Yeah, it got off in in the wet area. Um, well, you know it's like three or four laps in, but he still got off. You know and yeah. lost all the grip and and ended up in the kitty litter. So. Yeah, it could have been all over for him as far as some points today that he, he crawled his way back um, yeah. to, to stay. Well, and I think because they were, they were saying something about uh, they were going to be tied for uh, in the championship points standings, and then Lewis got fastest lap with two to go. So he's one point ahead. <laughs> yeah. you know. And I think they were saying Verstappen's never um, never led the championship before, which I didn't know that. I thought, I thought that was kind of strange. I thought – at some point in his career, he's at least led the championship for a some weekend point. or two. Yeah, um, but apparently not. But well, a, he hasn't been super consistent either at no. times, and so this year maybe he's going to turn that around. We we go back earlier, talking about just you, first you got to finish, and that's been it. 
Max is super fast, but yeah. that's always been an issue there. As uh, far as when you compete for a championship, is that a maturity thing? You think he's getting enough seat time now where he can make uh, better decisions? Yeah, I mean, I think he came into Formula One. He's obviously super quick, right? And but to win a championship at the at this level that where he is and with the competition of where Lewis is, you've got to finish every race. Yeah, you can't. Maybe the car is going to have some issues through the year, but do you put yourself in position to make sure you don't end up in trouble at times and um and be calculated in that way and yeah i think he's probably learning if he's gonna beat lewis for a championship he's got to be around yeah he's gotta be smart yeah and um it's obviously fast today and he did a great job but it's the days when he doesn't have the car to win that's when it matters the most that you don't get yourself in trouble right and take so, the second place and and move on live on well i mean live look, another at, week. look at scott dixon today yeah right quietly Quietly finishes up third, yeah. and look at some of his contenders sitting on the sidelines. Yeah. yeah, and he's battling for what his seventh championship, Se- seventh championship. Yeah, that he had his, t- you know, Jimmy Johnson's his teammate who has seven yeah. in NASCAR. So that, that's pretty cool. That, but, but you go back to that, and and I think Max has probably got some obviously really good people there at Red Bull. But sure, um, starting off the year right, and maybe he can stay on track to make this competitive. Well, um, and Italy being a track that he's never. Well, I think he DNF'd the last two out of three yeah. um, and never, you know, gotten close. So, yeah, that's definitely a good start for him. Yeah. And there's some speed in the car. I mean, the car is obviously on pace this year. No, I think they can definitely run with them as they showed today, um, which it's going to be exciting, you know, for the yeah. Formula One, so it's not going to be so lead follow-ish. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it just seemed like for a couple of seasons there, that's all it was. It was just who, where, where they qualified is where they finished the race. It would, which is not fun, unless it was a strategy thing, you know, whatever. But it just seems like there's a lot more parity this year, and there's a lot better racing. Yeah, it was. I mean, obviously, the rain makes it exciting. Well, yeah, I made it. It and, helped. It adds that value to it. So, um, but I think it is definitely closer. I think the gap has been is shrunk, you know, from the top yeah. uh, to the bottom for sure and against Mercedes. So we'll see how the the rest yeah. of the year get pans out. So full weekend, man. That, yeah. was, that was a lot. Um, we're not done yet, guys. We're going to take just a short break, but we're going to be back with a um, special guest Special guest here, and uh, we're going to highlight. We may start this more often. I was thinking this on the way in, and you'll see who our guest is here shortly. We may do this more often, just highlighting some other people that are in the motorsports um, yeah, I'm excited. arena. I mean, obviously, this one's close to me. I'm so, excited about this one. So this kind of just – we came up with this today, but we may do this for other – yeah kids in the area that'd be kind of cool yeah give them some experience so we'll be right back guys uh so don't go anywhere all right guys welcome back to driving life the motorsports recap show don we got a special guest here to my right yeah this is a surprise to me dude I, i'm i'm jacked about this it's cool I know. So, guys, we got uh, my oldest, Brant Trinkler. We need to come up with a nickname for you. Yeah. You know. BT. Something, you know. No, something no one, cool. Do we need to do that? Nice hat there, by the way, too. I like that hat. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. So Appreciate uh, that. So, we're going to have Brant on. You've started your, uh, man, how many races have you done so far this year? Two. I know. Two races in. Um, in your go-kart. So th- this is cool. So we're we, we're gonna. Well, I talked about it in the break that we may do more of this. Brant's uh, starting his racing career at Tennessee Karting Association, so we may bring in some more kids here yeah. um, on the show. And not that we're any experts on media stuff, but have a lot of fun with them on the show. So Brant, how's uh, how's your year going? Your two races in, and um, kind of tell everybody what you've been doing. Um, we're doing good. Um, first race was pretty good. Second place. Um. Uh, the se- uh, second race was in the rain at Indy. Up at Newcastle, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. And it was uh, kind of hard. The lining was very different. And um, it was just my first time in the rain experiencing. So well, how was it? What I mean, what? how did it feel differently? Like, what did you have to do? Like, where was your mind at driving the car? Um, I didn't really have a mindset. Just trying to... Just trying to stay on it. Yep. Keep it keep it underneath you. Mm-hmm. Work out pretty good. 
I thought it worked out pretty good. Yeah. Dad, how did it work out? I thought it went great. You know, we we um I we, we had a great time. I mean, it was a lot of fun to go up to to Newcastle. I think his first race, you know, we talked about Twin Fountains went really well and and I think we talked about this in the show that yeah. he's on one of my old carts that I drove about 20 years ago and uh, Jody Covington's got it and he's going to be on our show at some point. We'll get Jody on here, but so that that's special. He's going to run that cart, but he couldn't take that cart to um to Indianapolis. In oh. Newcastle, so they run a different they, the big nose that it's there's got a different on it. there's yeah, different, different body work different that goes body on. work yeah so this is you know the body work that the, the invader runs is completely different than what they run now I guess they call it the CIK body work or something so I scrambled around and got you a cart it's it's going to be your brother's cart so he's got his first race coming up May first but so you experienced a new go kart I mean could you feel I don't know if I even talked to you about this. That did you feel anything different with that cart compared to the Invader? I mean, remember we went up there Friday, so we had a dry a dry day. I know it was a new track for you, but did you feel anything different with that go kart? Um, the body work of the cart the cart was different, way different than the Invader. Yeah, because the Invader has the big nose. Yeah, and then the other cart has just like that. Just like the smaller front end. Yeah, the smaller front end. The visual. mm Hmm. It's a shorter wheelbase. Did you feel like anything different in the turns with that because um, of that? No, not really. I didn't feel that much, but it felt really different. But then the Invader, because yeah. that's the only thing I've just really tried. I know, that's the only thing you've, you've been on is the uh, Invader. So, I mean, was there some things? That this chassis is a Merlin is what we're running right now. Um, it, it, I mean, do you like the Merlin better than the Invader? Is that what you're telling me? Um, you can tell your card owner. Time for a new it. card. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm not. I'm not really sure. I like the Invader a lot. Yeah. But I do like the other cart too. Yeah. I can't really pick. Yeah. But they're all pretty good. You need to do like a back to back test and see. <laughs> yeah, which one's faster? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's a difference in competition, right? Is that why you're going up to Indianapolis? Is that I mean, what, what's the, so why are we traveling? Well, we thought, well, number one, th- this is for us to have a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, and I want, uh, y- you've taken off with this, which is great. And Brant has, and now Lucas is going crazy about it. And so they, cause we're going to talk Formula one too. Cause you guys were watching the, they got up early and watched formula one race this morning. And we do baseball and we do all the other stuff, but this was really cool. So we went to Indy. More of competition. You did pretty well at Twin Fountains. Second, right? Yeah, he finished second. He yeah. led some of that race. Yeah. You got the lead, and it, it's back up a little bit. We'll give sort of your race recap for you at Twin Fountains. You started the heat race last, which really wasn't your fault because you were you qualified third, um, but they had a little lineup issue, so he ended up starting last, which I thought was great. Mom wasn't so happy about it, <laughs> off the record. But <laughs> I thought it was great for you because you learned how to get through lap traffic and you got to way yeah. to fifth. So the feature, you started fifth, then you make your way to second, and then you get a pass for the league because you did – what did you learn in the heat race? Um, Just, tr- like, try to get by someone. If they leave something open, just take it. Yeah, but you caught lap traffic too, didn't you? And that's mm-hmm. how you got. The oh, lead. did you use him as a pick? Yeah, lap traffic. And so he, we were chatting on the way home, and he's like, "I mean, you, you tell me what you told me on the way home there." Um. Well, what you said that the leader didn't know he there was like other people behind him. Yeah. So he was kind of clueless that I was right behind him. Yeah. So he left something open, so I just took it. Yep. And you got by the lap carts at the same time. Mm-hmm. So that yeah, was really cool. I mean, it's a, so we, I guess, the reason we're traveling. We went up there with friends of the podcast, mm-hmm. uh, Jeremy Sweeney, Truett's running also, and and these guys have kind of bonded really well, which I've known Jeremy, also we know going back to grade school. And it's just a good father-son. You know, Jody Covington, we went with him, Mr. Jody. He's like, he's he's the glue that keeps all this together yeah. for me because I've been out of the karting world for so long. I need somebody like Jody with some direction <laughs> to some degree on that. Um, cause I make a pretty good <laughs> egg sandwich cause we took the camper up there. So I was, I was more the cook. For so the, you were I, cooking. I was cooking for the weekend. I was a little bit of a car chief, but, or cart chief, but I was more of the, well, you had to buy some rain tires too, didn't you? Mount oh, up yeah. some rain tires. He, he twisted my arm. <laughs> what, cause what'd you for tell you. me? What'd you tell me for the rain tires? Um, I don't really remember. Just do it, dad. Just, I really yeah. want to race. <laughs> 
Come on. <laughs> Give him the old come on. Because we only had one set time. of wheels. So we had oh, a so strategy. you had to break them down and then. Yeah, what was the strategy? Yeah. We had a strategy. So that day it wasn't like raining that hard. Mm-hmm. But then we were going to wait till next morning. On Sunday and, morning, and yeah. Sorry, Sunday morning and see if it was like raining so we could put the tires on. Yeah. And it was raining. So. We, so uh, you had to go for it mm-hmm. at that point. Who changed the tires for you? Who, who made the change? I mean, who was doing the tire change in that morning for you? I don't remember. Mr. Jeremy. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he, did he? Yeah, he took care of it. So I was cooking breakfast. So, um, but yeah, we put them on rain tires and, you know, you you went through the mud a couple of times, which is fine. But so we made the trip to Newcastle. I thought, and I've never been able to ask my dad this because my dad passed away a long time ago. Mm-hmm. But when I was in the karting days, I feel like we went – one weekend we'd run. I started on dirt, which I'd love to get him on dirt at some point. And we would um, go run a dirt track and then say, maybe we go run an asphalt oval. Maybe we go to a street race. And then maybe we'd go run a normal, conventional, like Newcastle right. road course. Purpose track. Purpose, Purpose track. Drill track. Yeah. Um, but we'd go run different stuff all the time. And so I think adapting to things and adapting to different situations was great. And and so that's one reason we said, you know, hey, let's go make this trip. Let's do it right now um, just to kind of get them, let them see a different track and see how that helps them, you know, here for Twin Fountains. Because unfortunately, TK's only got, that's the only track they run. You know, back when I was starting in Cardin, there was different places that we ran. Um, so I want him to be experienced enough yeah. just to see different things so he can yeah. adapt quicker. And that's one, yeah, we put him on the go, different go-kart completely and – got to drive in the rain so. so where else what other where else is close or where else would you go what 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 else is out there i mean i know they do it all over the place but like st- does it make a difference would you get would you go anywhere else yeah i think we will i mean i don't know like, we, we're talking about going to amp it wrote mm-hmm. it in atlanta somewhere down there um gopro motorplex over in north carolina might venture over there um we're gonna go back to newcastle we joined that as a family so we can go up there and test any time. Oh, yeah. So it's a short right. drive away. I mean, it's only a couple hours, right? Less than five. Yeah. So it wasn't not, not that bad a drive. So, um, but yeah, you're having fun, aren't you? I am. Yes. So, yeah. And you did it a little bit last year, correct? We did it one race. Oh, so one race yeah. last year. Yeah, we only did. And it was enough to light the fire? Um, I said, um, yes. Yeah. Because when I first started, I wasn't so good. Mm-hmm. Well, of course. Right. And then that race kind of like changed changed everything. And then that's when I really wanted to start. Yeah. Because I don't. Well, you you got to get a little bit of seat time in, right? I mean, anything yeah. new takes a little while to, to ramp up and get up to speed. And, you know, I'm excited for you. I think this is going to be really cool. I can't wait to come up and check out some races and you know, see how this, how this plays out for you. But I, I, I'm glad that you're having fun with it because that's, I think that's important at this point. And, you know, it's a family thing, um, which I, again, I think is really cool. Um, and then, you know, just see what happens from here. You know, you can, you can have fun and be competitive and be serious at the same time. No, for sure. I mean, we're, we take it serious, you know, but we want to have, we want to have fun too, don't we? Yeah. I, and I told Davin, and you saw me all, when I got off the go kart track last week. How happy was I? We were pretty happy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because that was like a long time before right. you've been on a go kart. I hadn't been on a go kart since '96, I don't think. But it, I, I was out there pushing, you know, Brand and Truett, and um, yeah, it was some of the most fun. Almost broke my ribs because of it. But yeah, that was, <laughs> 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 you know. But it was, um, it was a lot of fun. So, but. Let's talk a little Formula One. So you're up. We Don and I talked about it earlier in the show. What did you think about the race today? Um, I didn't get to watch all of it, but I thought it was a pretty good race. Yeah, started. I mean, started in the rain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, your, and your driver finished where? Second. Lewis. Lewis Hamilton. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, why do you like him so much? Um. Well, first off, he he races for a Mercedes, and I really like Mercedes. I can tell you got a nice shirt. Yeah, I was there. gonna say yeah. <laughs> You have an affiliation, or in the past, I've been I, I fond do. of Mercedes. Mercedes. I have too. Yeah, yeah. And um, he's just a good driver, and he's 
number 44. That's his old number. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah, that is my old number. Did not know that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he started in karting too, didn't he? He did, yeah. yeah. He did. Yeah. No, that that's that's a good reason. So, and you're, he came back and he finished second today. Mm-hmm. So, yep. He battled, went, he, battled went, yeah, he went off the track, which you you had a little bit, you know, last week, but you know, keep fighting right all that's the way right. to the end. Mm-hmm. Even today, um, in, in the IndyCar race, I can't think who's the other. Um, who's Scott Dixon's teammate? He went off. He he got caught up in that crash and they put his car basically pieced his car, car back, back together to get out yeah and put him back out on track i mean he he was you know 30 laps down or whatever it was but making points and making laps yeah that's what it's all about in it bud mm-hmm. awesome well you got so, any, you got anybody well, go ahead i was just gonna say so when's the next when are you back on track uh may 1st at um the tka event that's right down in twin fountains right? and you're gonna be gone right mm-hmm. I'm going to be gone, unfortunately. That that's that's the only that that weekend's going to, but it's going to be pretty cool. Other 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 than me being gone, but all three of us are going to be racing that day, and we were talking about that today. Nice. Brand will be racing. Lucas will. They're going to be in. The, and Lucas is so like yeah. Calculate. He's like yeah, but two of us will be in the same place, Dad. You won't be in the same place. <laughs> yeah, like, but <laughs> when we got the go kart, uh-huh. so he was going to. He wanted to try it out, mm-hmm. and the. Um, restrictor that we use was in the go kart, but he's gonna run the kid kart. Oh so yeah. he's probably gonna get on the track and say it's it's it's, it's slow. slow. <laughs> it's yeah, because he was where did he where did he drive it? Oh, just like straight up and down the up, up and down, down our street. Oh yeah, he was like ripping it. Well, well, he was like side to side, side to side. He yeah, was like, but he was like flat out. I think when uh-huh. he was like all the way. Yeah, so we were laughing on the way over here tonight that he's going to get in this thing and be like, man, this thing, because they put a, a different chip in it where it takes it like 4,100 as far as on the revs from yeah. like 6,100. And he's going to be like, man, this thing is slow. <laughs> <laughs> that, that'll that be fun. So is it all right if I, I can't come to Coda because there are no fans? Yeah, no, it's fine. Yeah, I got, I mean, we've got oh, help coming down. Yeah, I may be going. Come, come down there to yeah. cheer these guys on. Yeah, I'll, I'll drive in life will come down and hang with these guys and then you just have to report back from, i'm definitely in the back seat that weekend because they're like yeah we're not even gonna turn on like because they stream those races yeah. you know the sro races on um i think on some youtube stuff or whatever but they're like yeah we're not even gonna watch your stuff that day i'm like okay <laughs> <laughs> Gee, thanks yeah i'm gonna be on race <laughs> monitor watching these guys right? yeah so yeah yeah definitely because i got you know good buddy of mine brian butler who crewed our 44 car Mm-hmm. With CRG, he's going to come down and be uh, the cart cart chief for uh, for Brant Lucas that weekend. Which Jeremy Sweeney's definitely helping out, right? But Brian's going to come help supervise, you know, the kids and stuff, and and take care of them because I couldn't do it with all the support of everybody that's helping them. Because um, you got a lot of people helping you out to make this happen, other than me. A lot, yes. Yeah, who who are they? You got Jody. You got Truett, you got Jeremy, you got Mr. Brian. You got a lot of them. Yeah, a lot of them. That's what it takes. It yeah. takes a tribe. It does. It takes a team effort. So yeah. I, think that, I, I thank those guys tremendously because um, Dad still has to do his day job, which these guys have been. And that's one thing we've done with them. You've been traveling with me for a long time, and and Lucas has too, but they, they understand where I am and what's going on. Sure. So it's not like, oh, Dad's just gone and, yeah. you know, playing around for the weekend. They know it's work and – you know, especially this year, they've stayed with me in the camper at Sebring, and they understand that that it, this is work, and we got to do well. So, um, we had a lot of fun at Sebring too. Which you, you didn't do well at Sebring. No, I didn't. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we had fun at Sebring. We did have fun. Yes. Yeah. What, what did we go do? Car broke at Sebring. Yeah, a car broke at Sebring, but we did some cool stuff that Thursday mm-hmm. night, didn't so we? So after the race, we went to um, my dad's friend Richie. Ricky. 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 And we went to the his like ranch. Yeah. And he had a lot of like razors there. Yeah. And it was like a dirt path.
and you can just like drive drive, drive wherever, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, wasn't it? It was yeah. really fun. Yeah, so we took the kids there and had a lot of fun. So, all right, made it back from Sebring. Also, our adventure that we did in River Ranch there. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, our next IMSA race will be up at Mid Ohio, mid May, just north of Columbus. Getting the rig all cleaned back up, doing everybody's favorite here. We're back in Nashville at Two Rivers Campground, what I use the most to come use their dump station. So everybody's favorite, clean the black tanks and the gray tanks out. See our little uh, our tires there coming down four wheel drive road there in River Ranch. Golf cart's a little dusty there from the Sebring bumps and all the sand down there, but what a great couple weeks there. Uh, not the finish that we wanted there, but we'll be back at Team TGM. Keep tuning into Driving Life. Uh, following us around on the IMSA circuit, all the tech tips that we'll give to you on driving life. Have fun, guys. We'll talk to you soon. It's good stuff. Awesome, man. Well, Dom, it's going to be there to cheer you on. Yeah, I'll be there. Ready? Yeah. You did great, man. Thanks for coming on tonight. Yeah. And, uh, Thank you for having me. No problem, man. No problem. This guy's, he's a. He's going to be the pro, not me. Yeah, he's so. going to. Yeah. He's already got it down. You'll be spitting out sponsors here before you know it. <laughs> yeah. I want to thank. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Team TGM. Yeah. Bill I want to thank Driving Life. Yeah. Dad. <laughs> Mom. Dad, yeah. <laughs> Mom and Dad. Well, guys, that's Dom. You got anything left? No, man. I, how can I, I can't follow that. I know. That's good stuff right there. Let's just end it and call it a night. We'll come back next week. Yeah, guys. So uh, tune in next week. We'll be back uh, with our post race stuff and talk about the weekend's happenings. Um, we're going to get back to a, a, another podcast here at some point. I'm going to be doing a lot of traveling this week, but yeah. you know, we'll get back on that at some point. And, uh, like us, subscribe to us, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and uh, take care of each other, love each other. Showtime Motorsports, Mr. Ken Twaits. Franklin great, Road Apparel. Franklin Road Apparel for this great place. Yeah. And, um, man, it's so cool to be here. I love, it love coming here to the bar. And we might have a little different change in our studio next week. We're staying here. We're just going to start adapting to where we are, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So yeah. tune in next week, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah.